Hey, it's Cody again from the Keepers of Nerddom. Just wanted to take a moment and ask a funny question that I'm excited to mess around with again tonight. Why is it that so many of us nerdy people enjoy painting things, as in miniatures or scenery or just things that we collect and making them better? Uh, it's a fascinating question and tonight I'm actually going to be messing around and painting because I I started for the first time I got introduced I, I've been introduced years ago to Warhammer 40k but I finally broke down and bought a few pieces of it and wanted to at least try their recruit edition box because I really wanted to get into the Necron build and that was one of the cheaper uh, ways to do it and so Started uh, experimenting around with that, and really I just wanted a, a small set, uh, as cheap as you could with their cost, to experiment with their their painting concept. Because I've done miniatures and stuff before, because I've, I've painted some of uh, Heroclix figures and a few other things just for the fun of it. And I always thought, it's not going to be me. And come to find out... It's amazing. It's so much fun because you can you can do so much with miniatures. You know, there's there's board games like Warhammer 40K, Hero Clicks, and other things, and that there's things like D and D where you could paint a miniature that is representative of you. And heck, at this point, you could you could actually physically 3D print it. And so, why is it that we do it? What's what's the thing? Now, I think the answer is really simply just it's connection. You know, it's a personal thing that you look at and you go. I made this. I created this thing and it is it is mine. It is not somebody else's creation, a concoction. It is it is all me. And as you become more and more of a painter, not only does it become an ownership thing of I designed this thing, but it's also like you create a a sculpture, a work of art. Because as you paint you are getting better and better. You're learning techniques. Uh, there's there's a technique I just learned because I was like, how do they get those lines on the edge of armor to make it look like it's uh, rusting at the edges or having issues or just to give it more distress and then actually also make it give more depth to it? And come to find out all it was was taking some paint and rolling it onto the edges of your paint. Uh the, onto your paint job, on your armor. So just some examples, first off. I uh, mostly got this little guy done. I still, still need to spray him. But this is my one of my earliest tries at it. And the camera is like struggling to figure out where he is. But he turned out really well. And I did some of that armoring on the bottom half of him primarily. And some on his arms. And I need to look him over again. But I'm really excited for that. Another thing I tried was an enamel-based paint that I've used a lot of enamel paints before I even got back to really acrylics and used them. And so I love them. This guy needs some work on some detailing and stuff, but the thing with enamel paints that you find is it, it just takes so long. It's it's too... It's one of those funny things. They look amazing when they're done, right? And that's a lot of fun. But the problem is it's the the working up to it. It's It's the time it takes to get them ready. They take too long to get to the where they're they're good to go. And so why do we, you know, why do we use that kind of paint? Well, it's it's a different look because it's much more uh oh, at least the ones I have a lot of gloss enamels. Uh they they definitely look more shiny, which can be a lot of fun especially if it's if it's an armor or something and not like skin. Cuz once you have shiny skin with an enamel it gets a little weird, but Stuff like that. Another one that I'd love to show you guys as I'm working on this little guy is this Necron. I was really pleased with how he turned out and unfortunately the camera is struggling to get close up on him. I'll try to figure that out at some point. But I just wanted to take a moment and, and share with you guys a little bit of my painting jobs. That's a little better. I know he's far away. But I did the distressing on his gun primarily and... It really turned out well. I want to, on my next one that I'm working on right now, that's blue highlights for his armor, uh, I really want to make the distressing on his um, inner workings and servos, like the what I've painted black for his inner armor pieces, so like the more uh, susceptible to damage pieces. 
I want to give some distressing on that. And so it's, it's fascinating. Like the first tricks you learn is just how to be consistent and careful with your paint jobs and my word, sometimes it just comes down to a, like a steady hand, but also just the remembering of just go back over it, do it again. It's not a big deal. Uh, the next piece, like I've, I've learned a lot about is just sometimes, especially with enamel paints is overpainting that first time is a really good idea. So that way there's never a blank spot. Acrylic paints are just different. They dry faster. They don't spread in the same way. Uh, personally, I've enjoyed working with them much more, but they are much more susceptible to chipping. And I, th then I, I thought enamel paint was bad and no, it has nothing on uh, acrylic paints, but acrylic paints can give you just a faster process. And honestly, uh, uh, the coloring is just not necessarily as vibrant, but yet gives you a better, more realistic feel at times, which is interesting to do. Um, yeah. So it's also a fun thing of like figuring out what's your favorite colors. My, my daughter, as we were painting some of these things, she was looking through the book and you know, here I am doing these, this guy and my, my whole thing with him was I'm going to paint silver for his armor plating. And then you can see some silver up here on his shoulders that I kept that way. And then on his feet as well. But then over the top of that, I watered down a blue and painted it over it just to give it this effect of the armor has still a coating underneath that, but the paint itself is almost, you know, as though in, in universe is wearing off. And so it just gives you this very realistic feel to the character that, you know, this guy has been in hibernation for, you know, in their, their world millions of years and all this crazy stuff. And he's emerging from his tomb sarcophagus thing to go fight for his legion and how do you create that? You know, it's, it's fun. And, uh, you know, they, they, in their universe, the Necrons, they heal and they, they get themselves back to a hundred percent, but yet it almost implies like sometimes they may not heal unless they actually detect that there is sufficient damage. And so you can represent, here's a character like this one. I chose the head that had the, the jaw actually like falling off. Is like that's that's just a really cool effect to make make him stand out as a very uh, issued and worn uh, soldier for the Necrons that hasn't quite hit that point of regeneration, but he's on the edge. Like another shot or two, he's gonna be done for, and the regeneration protocol should kick in, but maybe not. Anyway, that's you know that's lore stuff, but the painting of this it's fascinating. But my daughter was looking through the. Uh, the book and she asked me a question that freaked me out because I had my mind you know especially for the uh, space marines I wanted to do some of the blues like you know the book suggests but I also wanted to do a red one because I saw it in the book but I also have some shiny red paint that I wanted to try out and I was going to start with enamel based and then realized uh, I think I'm just going to do uh, the acrylics because of how much less time it takes between drying and then continuing on and in fact, what I found was, as my daughter asked me, she's like, Dad, why don't you do one that's in, that's in black, you know? And I looked at the pictures, I was like, that could be crazy. Because like the Space Marine in, in all black with like gold or bronze highlights, it's just, it's, it's simple and it's elegant and it looks, well, it looks like, you know, in their universe, terrifying. Like, they look really cool. Now, the, the unfortunate thing was I realized as I'm painting all these things that they're supposed to be, like, an actual squad. But I'm almost beginning to think of my Space Marines as they're going to be, like, the... Oh, what's a good word for it? The... Oh, like, Republic Commando squad. That they're all... You know, they all have the standard armor, technically, but they're still... They've made it their own. And it, I'm, I'm going to go with that to an extent. And the Necrons, I don't know. I don't have any good in-universe explanation for this, but I wanted to experiment with different styles this first time out to understand, you know, which way did I actually prefer these characters to appear? What, what was it that worked for them? What was it that actually made them mine? You know, because 
when you look through some of the artwork of Warhammer 40 K there's, there's a reality that hits that they have certain color schemes that they typically recommend, but they actually kind of just go, go nuts, be free, you know, and it's, it's the same with D and D and, and even in Heroclix, because one of my favorite things to do in painting Heroclix was, I, I'm a big fan of Iron Man, is to take, uh, there was a movie set for Iron Man 3 years ago, and I love taking that set, and the Mark Seven in that was just a good blocky Iron Man suit that could be a pretty easy base for a lot of different options. And so what I did was I took it and I would paint it into all the different armors of the Iron Man 3 movie set and stuff like that. And actually, I think I have a few up here. Yeah, I do. Hang on. Let's get you a few real quick. Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, here we go. Uh, I don't have the original up there, but we turned them into... His black and gold suit from the actual comics, that one, and the Star Boost armor that just was fantastic. I also decided to do the blue steel, the silver centurion, but blue and silver. And it was just a really fun way because it, it really taught me a lot about painting initially. Because these were some of my earlier things, but what what what's so beautiful about painting miniatures and doing all this stuff is it's more about the adventure than the destination sometimes because it's really cool to show off but what's really amazing about it is also the just being able to show what you've created you know it's like it's like a cosplayer it's it's so much about the the as we watch the videos of how they make them now you know the end goal is worth it but the adventure to get there too golly it's cool you know and that's the beauty of miniature painting is one of the funnest things I've found with it is you have this dream in your head that nobody else quite sees, and then you have to make that a reality. You actually make that into a reality that others don't actually see right away. It's an artist, you know? They, you know, a lot of people would look at a painting, or really not a painting, but just a, a blank canvas and go, there's not much I can see that can be made with this. And an artist goes, I see a circus. I see a parade. I see a party. I see, I see flowers. I see an adventure. I see things happening that are going to be game-changing. And that's the beauty of why do we paint things. We, we see something that someone else doesn't, and we want to help them realize the reality of what we see. And that's that's the fun. That's the that's the adventure. And this little guy, I so far I think he might be hands down one of my favorite Necrons I've painted. And I've got a ton more to paint. But I'm really excited about it because it's it's gonna be something that's an adventure the entire way. And so uh, my my question for you all today is uh, if you if you collect nerdy things, do you take time to paint them? Go back over them. Do something else. What is the thing that you love to collect that you have to also paint? What is it that just sings to your soul in a crazy, awesome, random way that doesn't usually to anybody else? And you go, man, this is so much fun. Or maybe it's a, it is something like Warhammer 40K that, you know, not everybody's into it, but the the few that, at least in my area, that are are just gung ho for it. So what is it? What is your thing that you enjoy painting that you you wish more people would experience? And you know, show, in the comments, share your if you can, like post a picture or share a thing of what it is that you've. And YouTube probably won't let us share pictures, unfortunately. But describe some of the things you've painted. I'd love to hear what it is that gets you super excited about sharing and talking about. So anyway, I've been Cody from the Keepers of Nerdum, and keep on painting. Take care, y'all. Bye.